In Your House Buried Alive took place on October 20th in the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. The show drew just under 10,000 fans. Psycho Sid defeated Vader to become the number one contender for the WWF title. So when Buried Alive went off the air, the scheduled title match at the 1996 Survivor Series would feature Sid taking on Shawn Michaels. Vince McMahon put Sid over like crazy on commentary, reminding fans that Sid vs Shawn Michaels is our main event for Survivor Series in Madison Square Garden. Owen seems a little hesitant to start the match off and after the two men lock up, Owen gets pushed straight down to the mat. Owen accuses Sid of hair pulling. The exact same thing happens after the two lock up again, but this time Owen performs a kip up and Sid grabs his opponent by the throat. Owen then gets shoved out of the ring and the audience cheers for Psycho Sid. Owen can't believe what's happening and he considers leaving the match, but he decides to try an aerial attack while Clarence Mason distracts Sid. This didn't work out as intended. Owen is able to hit a face crusher before going to the top rope once again. Sid takes a missile dropkick and Owen follows up with a clothesline that sends Sid to the outside. Davy Boy Smith then comes down to attack Sid and Owen is able to take advantage while the big man is distracted. When we come back from commercial break, both Owen and Davy are taking turns at hitting Sid's leg on the ring post. Owen then focuses all his offense on his opponent's injured limb while the crowd starts a Sid chant. Owen's attack comes to an end when Sid grabs him out of a crossbody attempt and the King of Hearts gets dumped on the mat. At this point, someone holds up a sign that says, Hump his face, gold dust. Nice. Sid then misses a leg drop and Owen goes for the injured limb again. And while Davy Boy Smith has been out here doing chin locks for weeks, Owen applies an Indian death lock. Sid manages to break a sharpshooter attempt, but Owen goes straight back to the leg. It's kind of rare seeing Owen get in so much offense in a raw match, so this has been a really nice change of pace. Owen's mistake though was trying to go toe to toe with the big man. Sid gets an opportunity to hit a choke slam and Owen crashes down to the mat. Sid then signals for the power bomb and Davy Boy Smith runs in to cause a DQ finish. Shawn Michaels then shows up to help Psycho Sid. Shawn has a little slip when running into the ring. And after Bulldog and Owen have been taken out, Shawn and Sid have a few words with each other. Sid seems thankful that Shawn helped him out, but HBK gets reminded that he's got a date with Destiny at Survivor Series. Nothing to complain about here, I enjoyed this opening matchup. Owen Hart is going to provide commentary for the Raw match. Davey almost sends HBK out of the ring with a shoulder block and Davey does a little showboating afterwards. Shawn grabs a headlock, he gets whipped into the ropes. And HBK manages to make a great recovery when he slips after a leapfrog sequence. Sean knows he's falling, but he pulls off a Roman Greco thumb to the eye. HBK then hits a Frankensteiner and the Bulldog takes a few punches. And then Davey gets sent to the outside with a clothesline from Shawn Michaels. A ton of time wasting follows as Bulldog walks around the ring and Sean rallies up the audience. It feels never ending. Davey even does the whole I'm leaving the match stick and Sean doesn't bother to chase after him. Eventually, both competitors get back inside the ropes and the HBK chants begin destroying Davy's brain. Eventually, the two men lock up again and it ends with Davy taking an enziguri. Owen says Sean stole this move from the King of Hearts. And Sean brings Davy down with a headlock takedown. Both men get back to their feet and Sean answers a hip toss with a kick to the face. And then Davy drops Sean across the top rope. Sean bounces back into the ring and the impact looks great. Sean takes the Ric Flair corner bump and he falls out of the ring as Vince McMahon announces that the cops have been called for Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's still backstage giving the production staff a hard time. We come back from a commercial break and Davy's got a chin lock applied. Guys, he has to get the same treatment as everyone else. Three strikes and he's out. Sean gets to his feet and he fights out, but he takes a knee strike for his trouble, and Davy stays in control with a big vertical suplex. As Vince McMahon promotes Survivor Series, chin lock number two gets applied. Thin ice, Davy. Thin ice. Sean fights out and he tries a crucifix pin, but Bulldog counters with a Samoan drop. This match is really picked up after that long break at the beginning. And there it is, folks. Davy Boy Smith chin lock. Sean again fights out and he pins Davy Boy. It only gets a two count, and Bulldog fires back with a hard clothesline. Fans are beginning to get behind Davy as the match continues. We come back from another commercial break, 
and Sean has turned things around as HBK hits a flying forearm. After performing a kip up, Sean delivers a back body drop and Davey takes 10 punches in the corner. Davey then gets an opportunity to hit his running power slam, but Sean counters it, resulting in Bulldog taking a body slam. Sean climbs to the top rope and we see the elbow drop. Owen Hart then leaves the commentary table and he decides to hold Sean's legs when HBK goes for sweet chin music. It's a DQ finish. Psycho Sid runs down to help Shawn Michaels during a beatdown, but Sid accidentally hits Shawn with an elbow. The two men begin arguing, but Owen Hart puts an end to it by challenging Shawn and Sid to a match next week against himself and the Bulldog. The tag titles will be on the line. Shawn and Sid then get back on the same page, so there's a match we can look forward to next week. Shawn vs Bulldog was pretty good here though, I didn't like the time wasting early on, but when the pace quickened up, this one turned out to be a good main event. Sid and Shawn Michaels have the unfortunate task of following Pillman and Austin when they have an in-ring interview segment, while WCW gives us a rematch from last week, Booker T vs Lex Luger. HBK and Sid come down to the ring, Jim Ross is going to interview both men, but the commentators are still very shaken up by what's happened at Pillman's home. Ross reminds us that Sean and Sid are going to team up next week, but at the Survivor Series, these two are going to be in the main event in a one-on-one -on -one match. We see footage of Sid nailing Sean with power bombs after WrestleMania 11, and Sean says he's forgiven Sid for taking him out all the way back in April of 1995. HBK says it was he who went to the quote loony bin to get Sid back into the World Wrestling Federation, so there's no hard feelings on Sean's part. Sid replies by saying, First of all, that's bullshit. HBK says that Sid knows where he was before Sean brought him back, and he leaves it at that. Ross wants to know why Sid elbowed Sean last week. Sid calls Jim Ross fatso while explaining that it was a mistake, and if Sean doesn't believe him, well, then that's on Sean. Sean says it's done, HBK has moved on. But at Survivor Series, Sid is going down to the Heartbreak Kid. Sean has beaten Sid once, and he'll beat him again. When Ross calls Sid the favourite at the 1996 Survivor Series due to his size, Sid says that it's not just his size that makes him a favourite, it's also his ability. Sean immediately disagrees. HBK says it's Sid's abilities that will always be his downfall. Sean says that Sid isn't in his league. And Sid agrees, Sid says he isn't in the Little League. Sean quotes Ric Flair by saying, to be the man, you gotta beat the man, and this makes Sid laugh. Sean eventually pushes the podium away and the two men come face to face. Sean tells Sid to keep his hands off Jose Lothario when Jose begins getting a little too close to the big man. The voice of Jim Cornette echoes around the arena. Jim, Vader, Owen and Davey march to the ring. As Cornette says, it should be Vader getting the title shot at Survivor Series, not Psycho Sid. A brawl breaks out where Owen Hart hits Sid with a steel chair, and when Sean takes the chair away from Owen, Sid thinks it was HBK who hit him. The heels get back into the ring and Sean and Sid clean house, but the tensions continue to rise as Raw moves on to its next segment. Sid and Sean could become the tag team champions tonight just before their big Survivor Series main event. Stone Cold Steve Austin appears via split screen and he refuses to apologise for last week. That's the very last time we'll hear about the Pillman's Got A Gun stuff. Austin says he's heard that Bret Hart is in the building tonight and after Stone Cold takes care of Bob Holly in the main event, Steve says he might find Bret Hart and put Bret's little sharpshooter on the hitman himself. Owen tries to sneak attack Sid and that doesn't work at all. Owen then tries to make peace with the big man, but the King of Hearts ends up taking a hard Irish whip to the corner chest first. After picking Owen up by the hair and slamming him to the mat, Sid goes to work in the corner. Owen manages to jump over Sid after another Irish whip attempt, and now the Rocket gets a chance to lay in a few right hands. Sid pushes Owen away like he's nothing, and Sean then gets tagged in. Sid and Sean are working together absolutely fine here. Owen brings Sean down with a shoulder tackle, but a leapfrog and drop down sequence ends with Owen taking a monkey flip, a hip toss, and just before Raw takes a commercial break, Owen gets clotheslined over the top rope. When we come back, the Bulldog has already been tagged in. Davey gets taken down with a hip toss, and Sid comes back into the match. 
Davey takes a running boot to the midsection, but he answers with a very impressive vertical suplex. Sid comes crashing down hard, but Davey loses his momentum after missing a leg drop. HBK gets tagged in, but Owen stops Sean in his tracks by laying in a knee from the apron. This leads to Owen getting tagged in, and a little double team action from the WWF Tag Team Champions. Owen keeps the pressure on Sean with an inverted atomic drop, and Owen lays in some strikes to wear down Michaels. Sean tries to fight back from the mat, but it's no use. HBK ends up taking a knee strike, and things are looking pretty bad for the WWF Champion. Owen then puts on a chin lock. Davy is probably overjoyed at this marvelous sight. Sean fights his way out, and he manages to pin hard, but Owen kicks out at two. Sean takes a jumping clothesline before Davy comes back into the match. Davey, <laughs> Davey doesn't do much here, he kicks HBK a few times on the mat and he lays in a few body shots in the corner. He's in for about 20 seconds before he tags out again, must have been one of those days. Owen and Davey then double team Michaels and Vince wonders if Sid is purposely distracting the referee, letting Sean take a beating before the big main event in Madison Square Garden later in the week. Sean counters a top rope crossbody from Owen but he only gets a two count. Sid is begging to get tagged in, but the tag champs are doing a good job of keeping Sean away from his tag team partner. Davey comes back in, and Sid again is being a shit partner by inadvertently distracting the referee. Bulldog can't be asked tonight, so he tags in Owen and we see more double team moves from the champs. Bulldog feels bad, so he comes back in and he kicks Sean and his little showstoppers. Davey doesn't get disqualified either, and Davey must have been hitting the pipe before this matchup. Eventually, Owen misses a top rope dropkick. Sid finally gets tagged in and Davey takes a choke slam. There's a nice back body drop spot next where Owen goes over Sid's head while Sid has Davey in position for a powerbomb. Davey gets out of the powerbomb spot and Sean comes in to take out Owen. Davey finds himself in the middle of the ring and Sean goes for sweet chin music. Bulldog moves out of the way and Sid takes the super kick. Bulldog and Owen attack Sid and Sean afterwards and Sean ends up taking Owen Hart's enziguri. A great opening match for Monday Night Raw this week, I quite enjoyed this one. We then go over to Kevin Kelly who looks like he's absolutely shitting himself as Psycho Sid is ready to speak. Kelly tells Sid that the super kick looked like a mistake earlier on and Sid tells Kelly to shut up. For weeks this has been going on between Sid and Sean and there's no coincidence here. Sid gave Sean the benefit of the doubt when he saw Sean holding a steel chair last week after Owen's attack. But this week, the super kick wasn't a mistake, according to Sid. Sid says there's gonna be no mistakes at Survivor Series, the reign of Shawn Michaels comes to an end. Sean will have to step off the mountain and Sid will step above. No man will cast a stone to knock him down because Sid is the master and ruler of the world. Sid isn't everyone's favourite promo and he obviously has his little moments, but this promo was very effective and now fans had to choose. Do they want HBK to retain or do they want Sid on top of the mountain? HBK is just as pissed off as Psycho Sid it seems, even though it was Sean who messed up by hitting Sid with a super kick. Kevin Kelly has interrupted HBK's shower time to get an interview, and Sean says he and Sid have had conflicting personalities for a long time, despite their friendship. The problem Sean has is the fact that Sid wants Sean to call him the master and ruler of the world. HBK then brings up Bret Hart, saying that the hitman wants to be this perfect role model, Sid wants to topple the heartbreak kid, and it feels like everyone is treating the WWF champion like chump change. Sean says that everyone who calls him names or anyone who ever doubted him ended up getting kicked in the face by the heartbreak kid at one time or another. And even though tonight was a mistake, the sweet chin music still knocked Psycho Sid out cold, and the same thing is going to happen at Survivor Series. HBK says whether any other WWF superstar likes it or not, Sid is going down this Sunday. Sean wants Sid's respect, and if he has to beat it out of the big man on pay per view, then Sean's going to do it. A short promo here, again Raw was filled with these spots in order to promote the Survivor Series, so it's a bit hard to score this kind of stuff, but it was a good enough promo. Was it better than the Nitro tag match? Uh, it's really up to you. The match was okay, but to me it felt like a waste of time, so Raw gets the point.
Psycho Sid won the right to face the World Wrestling Federation Champion at Survivor Series when he defeated Vader at In Your House Buried Alive. In the weeks leading up to Survivor Series, Shawn Michaels and Sid had a hot and cold relationship where they would inadvertently hit each other on a few occasions. No matter how much these guys tried to be friends, they would end up somehow hurting each other. On the Raw before Survivor Series, the friendship completely broke down when Michaels accidentally super kicked Sid during a tag team match. All goodwill was then thrown out the window and so there was no reason for Sean or Sid to hold back at Survivor Series. Sean looks pretty tired here at the pay per view, the culmination of a bad lifestyle and the pressures of being WWF Champion had taken its toll on the heartbreak kid, and you can just see it on his face. Sid, on the other hand, Sid looks pumped up and the audience is absolutely in Sid's corner tonight too. The longer this match goes on, the more the crowd begins effectively cheering for the bad guy. Times were changing, the white meat babyface stuff just wasn't going to cut it anymore as we went into 1997, and even though the crowd had given Rocky Maivia a pass earlier on, they weren't so enamoured with Shawn Michaels. This audience wanted Shawn to drop the title and well, that's exactly what happened. No one will call Sid the most athletic superstar in the world, but HBK has a great way of making big guys look even better and that's what happens during this bout. It starts off with HBK bumping like crazy for Sid's big clubbing blows. Sean takes a beating in the opening moments but it's HBK's quickness that gives him an advantage. Sean manages to apply a side headlock and when the competitors get back to their feet, HBK shows no fear by slapping Sid across the face twice. Sid then finds himself in a head scissors but he kips up and Sean takes a slap to the face. HBK tries to throw down with Psycho Sid but that gets him nowhere. The crowd pops when Sid lifts Sean above his head for a press slam, but Sean gets down and he nearly runs into a powerbomb attempt. HBK escapes and the two men take a breather. After chasing Sean around the ring, Sid ends up taking a boot to the face followed by a chop block. HBK is going to try and take the big man's left leg out, but the crowd aren't too happy about this. They're booing the WWF Champion. Again, the crowd have no love for Shawn Michaels when a figure 4 gets applied, but to his credit, Shawn reads the room and he continues giving the audience a reason to boo him. When Sid begins his comeback, he forgets to sell the leg, but no one cares. They're just happy Sid's back on the offense. Shawn reminds Sid to hold his injured limb by hitting a low dropkick. The more Shawn goes for the leg, the more the audience boos him. Sean gets the opportunity to skin the cat and when Sid clotheslines his opponent out of the ring, the audience comes alive. It's incredible how much the fans are turning on the same guy they loved for so long during 96. Sid attacks Sean on the outside and he also takes the time to fist bump a few fans. The attack continues inside the ring, but to be honest, Sid is also starting to look a little tired. Sean takes the Ric Flair bump in the corner but he manages to drop Sid across the top rope afterwards. HBK tries an aerial attack but Sid grabs his opponent in midair. A backbreaker follows and Sid only gets a two. Sean takes a few Irish whip bumps in the corner and HBK is now out on his feet. Sean wakes up and he manages to throw a few punches and Psycho Sid finds himself taking a body slam. Sean goes to the top rope, but he ends up taking a boot to the face, giving us this meme-worthy moment right here. HBK breaks a chokeslam attempt by poking Sid in the eye. Sean then goes for sweet chin music. Sid grabs Sean's foot, and then we get to see that chokeslam. Sid goes for the power bomb, but Sean reverses with a small package. Sid kicks out at two, and Sid makes Sean pay with a big power slam afterwards. HBK answers with his flying forearm, but it doesn't knock the big man down. Sid comes right back at Sean when HBK performs a kip up. And then we get the finish, a finish that was supposed to solidify Sid as a heel, but the New York audience still cheered anyway. Sid grabs a camera and he takes aim at Shawn Michaels. Jose Lothario has jumped up on the apron, so Sid decides to hit Jose instead. HBK then hits sweet chin music, but he doesn't go for the pin. Good guy Sean goes out to check on his mentor. This was a mistake. Sid throws Sean back into the ring and Sean nails the referee by accident. HBK then goes back to the outside and Sid ends up smashing the camera across Sean's back. Sid again throws HBK into the ring, Sean takes the powerbomb, and we have a new WWF champion. The boyhood dream has ended, and Sid is now the man. 
Sean crawls to the back as medical staff tend to Jose Lothario and Sid celebrates inside the ring as the crowd goes nuts for the big man. Times were changing in the World Wrestling Federation and Sid was going to lead the way for the foreseeable future. Jim Ross gets all hot and bothered backstage while he watches Psycho Sid lift a few dumbbells. That WWF belt sure looks good on the big man. And then Vince McMahon gives us a recap of what happened during the main event last night at Survivor Series. Vince says Sid snapped when he attacked Jose Lothario. Jose refused medical attention in Madison Square Garden and he's resting up in San Antonio. And then Vince says that Shawn Michaels was the most charismatic and flamboyant champion the WWF ever had. And some people don't like him. Actually, Vince, Madison Square Garden absolutely hated Shawn Michaels last night, but nonetheless, Vince says people don't like Shawn Michaels because he dances, he has long hair, and because he's a ladies man. Jerry Lawler interrupts Vince to say that HBK is also cocky and arrogant. That makes way more sense than people hating Shawn because he has long hair, so good save here from Lawler. Vince pretty much says that Sean had Sid beat last night and the only reason he lost the WWF title was because he wanted to help Jose Lothario. And Vince says that Sean may be a ladies man, but what he done last night when he helped Jose shows that HBK is actually a man's man. A man worthy of a WWF title rematch against Psycho Sid. I honestly don't know if it's possible for Vince to get in there any deeper without hitting the back of Sean's teeth. Over on Raw, new WWF Champion Psycho Sid gets interviewed by Jim Ross. Ross says that Sid had thousands of fans cheering for him last night. Many said it couldn't be done but Psycho Sid is now the man. Ross wants to know if Sid has any remorse for attacking Jose last night and Sid says no. Jose got on the apron and therefore Jose became part of the game. When asked if he'd give Sean a rematch, Sid says yes and Sid will once again take out HBK because Sid is the master and ruler of the world. It doesn't matter if it's Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker or Vader, Sid says he's going to be a fighting champion. But next in line is Bret Hart when the Hitman gets his title shot at the next In Your House event. Sid trips over his words a little here. Cause you have to face me Bret man. Hitman. And Sid says Brett won't rebuild his reputation by defeating Sid for the title. Brett's big comeback comes to an end at In Your House in West Palm Beach, Florida. Sid again says that he's the master and ruler of the world as Raw fades to black. We go to Jose Lothario's home where Jose and HBK are sitting on Jose's exquisite couch. Vince wants to know how Jose is feeling and Jose says he's felt rough but hitting the pipe earlier with HBK has made him feel 10 times better. Just kidding, Jose wants to start off by apologising to the fans and to Sean for costing HBK the WWF title but I think fans may have been thankful for Jose Lothario here. HBK gives Jose a little nudge because Super Sock won't fuck up. Vince again asks Jose how he's doing and Jose says and I quote that they're going to do a balloon pass through my heart because my heart was really damaged at the survival series. The fuck? Sean can be seen here going, holy mother of god, he's completely fucking this one up. Vince McMahon announces that Shawn Michaels will get a title shot at the Royal Rumble in San Antonio, Texas. And in regards to the Survivor Series, Sean says, what's done is done, Jose isn't to blame, HBK is to blame. Somewhere over the last few months, Sean lost his edge and because of that, HBK subsequently lost the WWF Championship. Jerry Lawler cuts to the chase by saying that old fossil sitting next to HBK was what cost Sean the belt. And HBK says if Sid was able to beat him in a skill based wrestling match where the better man truly won, then Sean would accept that. Sid instead decided to attack a 62 year old man and that was uncalled for. Sean said he wants Sid in his hometown so the people of San Antonio can tear Sid apart and HBK says he'll meet Bret Hart another time. Vince wants to know how Sean felt about the fans booing him and Sean says he didn't care. He wants fans to enjoy themselves when they come to see him wrestle and if Sean can no longer provide that enjoyment then the fans can get it from somewhere else. The fans aren't the priority anymore, Psycho Sid is the priority. 
And Sean says if the fans get behind him then that's totally fine, but if they don't then that's fine also. Vince says Sean's getting a little defensive here and HBK fires back saying that he's just being honest. And the interview wraps up with Sean saying he's going to kick Sid's teeth down his throat inside the Alamo Dome. Regardless of WCW Nitro replaying the World War stuff, this was still a good promo on Raw from Shawn Michaels. He's definitely moving into tweener territory with this one, and honestly, it's leagues better than the white meat babyface Shawn who Vince McMahon just can't get enough of. Arn Anderson looks to destroy Jim Powers next on Monday Nitro while Shawn Michaels gets interviewed on WWF Raw. Vince wants to know what Sean's apologising for tonight. Sean says that Vince said last week that he got a little defensive, and HPK says he apologises for not being defensive enough. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? We see screenshots from Survivor Series and… you know the story here. Sean says he doesn't have a problem with Sid using the camera on HBK, he has a problem with Sid using the camera on Jose Lothario. From this point on, pay attention because you can tell this was a promo written by Vince McMahon. Sean says he got emotional last week but he's had time to think about the fans booing him in New York. Sean says that the fans that booed him are the same fans who cheer for his flamboyance and charisma. They may have been booing in the garden but those same fans know that when HBK is on the card they're going to see the best match of the night. HBK gives the fans what they want when they want because he'll take risks. And Sean takes risks because, and I quote, he's a man's man. <sighs> Sean says people call him a bad role model, but Sean says he's just being honest and he's not ashamed to bring his skeletons out of the closet and into the ring. Mm -hmm. HBK says he has long hair, tattoos, he's got his belly pierced, he's not politically correct, but at the Royal Rumble, he's gonna win the belt back and when that happens, whether Bret Hart likes it, whether Sid likes it, He'll continue to come out of the ring to speak his mind and tell the truth because he's extremely proud of who he is and what he's become. Thank you very much for the promo Vince, I mean thanks for the promo Sean. Seriously though, last week's HBK promo was way better. We then see clips from that UK tour, remember last week when Bulldog saved Bret Hart? Well the storyline progressed overseas. Austin attacked Psycho Sid with the WWF Championship belt and this caused the British Bulldog to hit the ring to attack Austin. Once Austin got out of the ring, Sid tried to powerbomb Davey, but Bret Hart then came down to save his brother-in-law. Bret and Sid went face to face, but Steve Austin then attacked Bret from behind, resulting in Hart taking a choke slam from the WWF Champion. Everyone gets interviewed afterwards, Austin is angry at Bulldog showing up, Bulldog is angry at Austin but Owen wants Davey to focus on their tag team and their upcoming match against Diesel and Razor. Brett says he'll deal with Austin down the road but right now he's focused on In Your House and his WWF title shot. And Sid rightfully says he has no idea why all these people are getting involved in his match but with that being said, Sid has no problem taking people out because he's the master and ruler of the world. We've got a Ric Flair and Roddy Piper promo up next on WCW Nitro while the World Wrestling Federation start things off with the Triple H vs Psycho Sid Champion vs Champion match. Psycho Sid launches an attack during Hunter's entrance and the future King of Kings takes a baiting on the rampway. When the action gets in the ring, Hunter gets pummeled in the corner. Jim Ross says Sid is sending a message to Bret Hart as the WWF champ hits a press slam on the IC champ, so far Hemsley has done absolutely nothing. Hunter does manage to avoid a big boot, but he ends up getting pushed out of the ring for his troubles, and on the outside, Sid drops his opponent across the guardrail. As Sid continues his assault, Jim Ross announces that Shawn Michaels will provide commentary for the WWF Championship match at In Your House It's Time. So that's going to be interesting for sure, seeing as neither Sid nor Brett have much love for the man's man, HBK Shawn Michaels. Triple H takes the flare corner bump and he walks right into a choke slam. Sid then hits the power bomb, and Hunter decides to roll out of the ring to get himself counted out. I get it, make Sid look as strong as possible before the pay per view, but they done that here at the expense of their intercontinental champion. And I know people don't like Triple H, but this was some bullshit right here. No offense whatsoever from Hunter, absolute squash match. 
Imagine if this was WCW World Champion Hulk Hogan doing this stuff. The Hulkster would never do such things. On Superstars, Doc Hendricks interviewed Shawn Michaels inside the arena and Shawn is in a real bad mood today. HBK says he isn't there tonight to make the main event more exciting, Sid and Brett are gonna have to do that by themselves, but Shawn says if either guy sticks their nose in his business then he will retaliate. Doc snitches on Bret Hart when he tells HBK that the hitman said Shawn's been an emotional wreck lately and this might be Bret's last chance to win the gold. And HBK says it's funny how Bret passed judgement on Shawn's title reign while he sat in Calgary for 8 months doing absolutely nothing. And HBK says he hopes his kids don't grow up to be just as stupid as Bret. Don't hold back there Mr Emotional. Just in case you haven't been keeping up on reliving the war, Vince McMahon has been pushing Sean as a quote, man's man ever since HBK dropped the belt as Psycho said at Survivor Series, and I'm guessing this newfound attitude is all to do with that. Bret Hart then gets interviewed by Doc outside the arena and Hart says that Sid may be a big guy but he's never faced someone like Bret Hart. Bret says Sid may be crazy but the hitman can get crazy too. In one way or another, Sid's gonna be on the mat with his legs twisted up in his sharpshooter. Shawn Michaels then shows up and he pushes Bret. This is the first time these two have came face to face on TV since WrestleMania 12. And HBK says he shouldn't send his messenger boy Doc Hendricks around to spread rumours. If Bret has something to say, he should say it to Shawn's face. Shawn calls Bret the most arrogant man he's ever met before walking off. That's pretty rich coming from HBK. Just before Superstars ended, Doc gets a word with WWF Champion Psycho Sid, and Sid says he senses a little paranoia in Bret the Hitman Hart. Sid says that Bret likes to call himself a great technical wrestler, but Sid just defeated the greatest technical wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels. Those were Sid's words by the way, not mine. And in regards to HBK sitting at ringside tonight, if HBK interferes then Shawn will get the same that Jose got last month. HBK then appears from nowhere and a fight breaks out, Bret Hart also appears and he tries to pull Sean away from Sid but Bret and Sean end up fighting too, everybody ends up fighting. We see Pat Patterson, Jerry Briscoe and even Vince McMahon trying to break up all three men. When Bret Hart made his comeback back on the 21st of October, he took some shots at Shawn Michaels, the man who defeated him at WrestleMania 12. Hart said there's something about Sean he just doesn't like and these words stuck with the heartbreak kid. Bret then defeated Steve Austin in his big comeback match at Survivor Series and the hitman earned himself a title shot at In Your House It's Time. Also at Survivor Series, Sid defeated Shawn Michaels to become the new WWF Champion, so you can see how Shawn was kinda intertwined in this matchup. On top of this, the heartbreak kid cut a few promos where he came across more like a tweener saying he doesn't really care what the fans think of him and saying he always delivers the best match no matter what card he's on. HBK is also next in line for a WWF title shot at the Royal Rumble, so depending on the outcome of our next match, we could see a Shawn vs Sid match in San Antonio, or we could see Bret Hart vs Shawn Michaels taking place in Shawn's hometown. Terry Gordy's buddy Doc Hendricks interviews the Hitman before the big main event. Doc wants to talk about the brawl on Superstars and how Bret feels about taking on Psycho Sid, but Shawn Michaels' music plays in the arena and Bret gets pissed off. Really, well, wait a minute, wait, wait. I think we gotta go back to ringside. Bret says he's sick to death of Shawn Michaels and he looks forward to meeting HBK after he wins the championship. Take note of all this though, this wasn't the same Bret Hart we saw at the beginning of 1996 at all. You could say that this was the beginning of Brett's quote crybaby phase where he complained about absolutely everything and of course this would only get worse. HBK comes down to the ring followed by Brett and Sid. Brett looks seriously pumped up for this one and Sid looks as intimidating as ever. But on commentary, Sean is burying both guys. HBK says that Brett turned into a bitter man while sitting at home and he's now past his prime. 
and said should be known as the WWF's most expensive piece of luggage, meaning everyone has to carry him through matches. Brett starts this one off uncharacteristically by attacking Sid from behind. The hitman goes to work on Sid with a series of strikes, but this was a mistake. Sid whips Brett into the corner and the hitman takes a clothesline. And if we've learned anything by watching Brett Hart wrestle big guys, we know that Brett needs to focus on a leg. Brett does manage to hang in there with Sid though, raking Sid's eyes on the ropes and bringing the big man down with a snapmare followed by a leg drop. Sean says Brett can scrap when he needs to and this is what we're seeing right now, but then he negates his praise of the hitman by calling him vanilla and boring. Brett again learns that slugging it out with Sid will probably be ineffective as the big man clubs Brett so hard that the hitman has to take a timeout. Sid chases Brett and the hitman tries to get back inside for a setup, but Sid pulls him right out and Hart takes more punishment. Sid throws Brett back into the ring and Brett recovers in time to go on offense again. He tries to land a few strikes while Sid's against the ropes, but the big man throws Brett back to the outside and so far, Brett's strategy hasn't got him anywhere. On the outside, Sid pulls up the protective mats and he goes for a powerbomb, but Brett counters it and Sid gets his lower back rammed into the ring post. Not once, not twice, but three times. Knowing Brett wouldn't waste much motion during his matches, and seeing as he done this three times, maybe Brett isn't going to target the legs after all and he's going to go for Sid's lower back. And this just gets confirmed when the hitman hits a middle rope double axe handle. Sean says that this kind of targeted offense is Brett's bread and butter. If it works, Sid's going to be softened up for a sharpshooter and it'll all be over. Brett hits a backbreaker before driving more elbows into the lower back of Psycho Sid and Brett drives his knee into Sid's back while performing a camel clutch. The punishment continues, Lawler says that Brett can do this all night long but Sid is too strong to give up, to which Sean replies that Sid is too stupid to give up. Brett begins fighting dirty, he chokes Sid on the mat before removing a turnbuckle pad behind the referee's back. Brett tries to ram Sid's head into the corner but Sid is too strong. Brett notices he's in danger so he goes straight to the back and Sid ends up taking a back suplex. The big man gets folded up like an accordion here. It's been all Brett Hart these past 5 minutes or so as the beating continues. A side Russian leg sweep from Brett, a suplex from Brett, and Brett's signature elbow drop from his very own rope gets delivered straight to the lower back of Psycho Sid. Brett goes upstairs once again but Sid catches his opponent. Brett gets thrown off the top and Sid remembers to sell the back for all of about 10 seconds. As soon as Sid goes on offense, he's been magically healed up somehow. Brett takes some big clubbing blows. Sid lands a big boot and a power slam. The big man misses a leg drop next and this gives Brett a chance to try a sharpshooter but Sid pushes hard out of the ring. On the outside, Steve Austin shows up and he attacks Brett from behind, taking out Brett's leg in the process. Davy Boy Smith comes out to remove Austin from the match but the damage has been done. Brett's been injured and Sid isn't going to show any remorse. Both men should have been wounded animals here but Sid has completely forgotten about the beating his back just took a few minutes earlier. Sid tries to hit snake eyes on the exposed turnbuckle but Brett gets down. He tries to push Sid but Sid counters. Brett then trips up and one of the big bumps of the match doesn't happen. So they go through the same routine again, only this time Brett takes the bump on the exposed turnbuckle. The impact of the move is totally lost and the fans don't care. The crowd get back into it though when Sid hits a choke slam and the hitman kicks out. And immediately afterwards, Brett manages to clothesline Sid over the top rope. Both men tumble out of the ring and Brett wants to use Sean's chair as a weapon. Sean gives it up without a fight, but Sid stops the hitman from attacking. Sid then pushes Sean to the guardrail before getting back into the ring and HBK is now angry. HBK leaves the announce desk, he jumps up on the apron, but it's Bret Hart who ends up colliding with Sean. This stuns the hitman and Bret ends up walking straight into a powerbomb and Sid wins via pinfall. The reaction is kinda mixed as Sid celebrates. Brett rolls out of the ring with a bloody nose and the hitman then launches an attack on Shawn Michaels. Sid doesn't get involved, why would he? HBK is next in line so Sid lets Brett take out his anger on Shawn before the hitman leaves the arena. 
The pay-per-view ends with Jim Ross saying Brett was robbed tonight of the WWF Championship, and the commentators take some time to hype up the 1997 Raw Rumble. To me, the match was okay, but not great by any stretch. Sid forgetting about his back was kind of the big thing that stood out for me, but that slip-up and the repeated spot from Brett was also kind of surprising to see. Definitely not a great night for neither man, and the main event kind of felt like a letdown, all things considered. Sid still feeling the effects of the copious amounts of Scooby Snacks he ate last night at In Your House. McMahon, <laughs> and then I said you have impressed the entire World Wrestling Federation. JR just made a <laughs> Vince McMahon says that Sid has now defeated both Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and McMahon wants to know if there's anyone who can defeat Psycho Sid. Sid says no, he's the master and ruler, the belt is staying on Sid, and anyone who steps into the ring with the big man will go down. Vince wants to know how Sid feels about going into Shawn's hometown for the Royal Rumble to defend the title against HBK, and Sid says he loves it, he lives for the adversity, and so it's gonna be a sweet victory for Sid when he walks into the Alamo Dome and defeats Shawn Michaels once again. McMahon says that Jose Lothario will be back in HBK's corner at the Royal Rumble, and Sid reminds Jose about what happened at Survivor Series. A warning is sent to HBK's mentor, stay at home and don't get involved. We then see HBK and… <laughs> what can we say really, it seems like Shawn has seen some better days, doesn't it? Vince wants to know if Sean has considered the fact that he might get humiliated in front of his hometown at the Royal Rumble, and Sean replies while almost very nearly forgetting how to say his own name. The only thing is, our freaking Sean Michaels has been humiliated a number of times. HBK says Southern Texas is also the home of Jose Lothario, and the people there aren't too happy with what Sid did to Jose. Sean's gonna beat Sid for what he did at Survivor Series and HBK will claim what's rightfully his in the process, the WWF Championship. When asked about In Your House, It's Time and how HBK cost Bret Hart the championship, Sean says he isn't going to come out and cry and whine like Bret Hart while making excuses. Sean says he's winning his title match at the Royal Rumble and as for Bret Hart, the hitman will never be like HBK and even if Hart wanted to be just like Shawn Michaels, he simply couldn't. Again, apologies, this is all over the place just like Sean's mental state at the time, but in saying that, it does add a little realism, I guess. You can really tell here though that the Bret vs Sean match was in the pipeline for WrestleMania. I know the WWE Yes Men of today who have podcasts like to say that that wasn't the case, but it's fucking clear as day to anyone who watches this stuff on a regular basis that Sean and Bret were gearing up for a match at Mania while Psycho Sid was acting as the stumbling block along the way. New NWO member Big Bubba takes on the Dungeon of Doom's Conan next while Vince McMahon interviews Psycho Sid inside the ring. HBK pays attention to Sid's interview from the locker room, Vince McMahon reminds us that Sid has beaten Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and then you notice that the champion's theme music isn't going to stop here and the lighting inside the arena isn't going back to normal either. This whole promo's gonna have Sid's entrance music playing in the background, which is a little weird but it's a great theme song. Vince says everyone has an attitude these days, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Austin, Vader, The Undertaker. And Vince says these men are all playing into Sid's hands. Sid says he has indeed beaten two greats within the space of 30 days, and now when Sid walks, the ground shakes, and when Sid talks, people listen. Sid is now the super predator of the World Wrestling Federation. What a great name. HBK rolls his eyes when he hears this backstage. Sid says he's six foot nine, over 300 pounds, and tomorrow he'll be the same weight and size, and the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that. I don't know man, Sid might have a little slip up and end up phoning the executioner's fast and furious pizza delivery service, but what Sid's trying to say here is he'll remain unstoppable while holding the WWF championship. Sid's delivery was so good here, even if his words mean very little, he does come across as really intimidating and he has such a great presence. Vince promotes the 1997 Royal Rumble main event before Raw moves on to its next segment.
Vince gets a quick interview with a very dismissive Shawn Michaels next and Shawn isn't in the mood for answering questions at all. Shawn was definitely all over the place during these tapings judging by last week and this week. Shawn says he's not like Bret Hart. HBK didn't complain when he lost the title at Survivor Series but HBK knows that referees let things slide during big matchups and so Shawn will live with the fact that he was beaten at Survivor Series and that's that. At the Royal Rumble in San Antonio, HBK will bring everything he's got and he's going to be prepared for everything inside the Alamo Dome. Brad and Sean get in the ring and Jim Ross is going to ask the hard hitting questions. Ross announces a Vader vs Brad Hart match next week on Raw and Sean says he's going to commentate once again during a Brad Hart match and he promises, as always, he won't interfere. This gets a round of boos from the audience. Ross wants to ask Sean the first question, but Sean says he won't dare go first. A lowlife degenerate like Sean Michaels shouldn't begin this interview while the role model Bret Hart is standing in the ring. The almighty hitman should answer the first question. Bret says that this is the exact thing he doesn't like about Sean Michaels, his whole attitude. Brett says Sean's mentor Jose Lothario jumped on the apron at Survivor Series and he cost Sean the WWF title, but at least Jose apologized. Brett says Sean hasn't learned a thing from his mentor, seeing as HBK didn't apologize to Brett for what happened at In Your House, it's time. Brett says he was screwed out of the title back at WrestleMania 12, and when Brett lost the match, Sean promised to carry the belt with the same pride and the same class as the Hitman. And yes, he actually did say that by the way. Long time viewers of the show will remember Sean saying this back on the April 1st 1996 episode of Raw. But well, Brett says that Sean didn't even come close to carrying the WWF belt with honour. The hitman gets a little righteous when he says his kids used to look up to Sean Michaels, but HBK scraped the bottom of the barrel when he posed for Playgirl magazine. And Brett says he doesn't think it's girls who buy that magazine. Interesting. The hitman continues on by saying Sean degraded the WWF Championship. HBK isn't a man's man, HBK has no class, he's a disgrace, and Brett summons his inner Hulk Hogan as Sean takes off his jacket and Brett says, quote, Sooner or later brother you're gonna step into the ring with me whether there's a title on the line or not. Brett says he's gonna kick Sean's ass and this gets a great pop from the audience. It's now HBK's turn to retaliate and it gets personal right away. Sean says he's seen Brett on the road and Brett is no role model. Just as things are about to get juicy, out comes Psycho Sid to interrupt the promo. There's a broken mic getting used in the ring and check this out, Sean passes Sid a working microphone. Thank you, my man! <laughs> I don't know why, but I found that really funny. Sid says he's defeated both Brad and Sean and now he wants some real competition. The lights go out in the arena and The Undertaker's music plays. Taker comes out but he gets attacked by Vader. The dead man takes care of Vader and a stare down between Sid and the Phenom takes place but Vader blindsides Taker. Back inside the ring, Sean uses Brett's own rope against him and Brett gets his little Calgary hitman crushed. Sean then attacks Sid, and the segment fades to black as HBK and Sid fight on the entranceway. A great promo indeed, though I could have happily watched Brad and Sean verbally rip each other apart instead of Taker and Vader getting involved, but that stare down between the dead man and the WWF champion was actually really good too. Jose Lothario has brought his son to Monday Night Raw, say hello to Pete. The least Pete could do is fucking smile. Jose says he's doing a lot better and he's going to be in Sean's corner at the Alamo Dome for the Royal Rumble. Pete says he's been looking after his dad these past few weeks, Pete says what Sid done at the Survivor Series scared the whole family, and Pete says, quote, In Texas, we don't play that game. Yes, the smack a monitor with a giant camera game only gets played in places like New York. Pete says if he needs to go after Sid himself at the Royal Rumble, then he will. Fucking Pete, the absolute madman. Sean says Psycho Sid has upset the whole Lothario family. Sid can use whatever he can get his hands on at the Royal Rumble, but it won't work. HBK says he's going to pay attention to Sid's interview later in the broadcast, and also HBK is once again going to provide commentary 
for the Bret Hart main event. Sean promises not to interfere. We then get some highlights from Shotgun Saturday Night that premiered just two days earlier. Again, if you want to learn about the first lot of Shotgun episodes, check out my video on the subject. Nothing special here really in terms of the promo. Funny seeing little Texas Pete here though threaten Psycho Sid. I'm sure Sid would eat this guy alive. Alright, so this one's a little more than Sid just saying he's the master and ruler of the world and all that stuff. Sid knows he's walking into Shawn Michaels' home turf at the Royal Rumble, but the big man is afraid of absolutely nothing. And Sid then calls the ring the killing field. Sid, the <laughs> Sid then says, and I quote, You have to be hit or be hitting. You have to kick or be kicking. I'm not joking either, by the way. You have to hit or be hitting. You have to kick or be kicking. I'm going to start taking Steiner math and Sid English night classes. Sid says the day he was born, he was born the man. Have a look. And that's something Shawn Michaels can never claim. Sid's gonna walk into San Antonio with the odds stacked against him. He'll walk in the man and he'll walk out the man. Sid then says he's the master and ruler of the world, as expected. The promo comes to an end and this was some mind blowing stuff right here. Shawn's theme music plays in the arena and out comes HBK wearing a long coat looking like he's prepared to deal some scooby snacks to the fans outside the arena. But the only thing old Snortsky's carrying here is his body. A body he shows off on the announce table and a body that makes Psycho Sid smile. And I mean, he smiles a lot. These two are going to war soon on pay per view but Sid looks quite enamoured by the heartbreak kid. Ooh la la. Sid laughs at this marvellous sight and then Sid tells Shawn Michaels that he won't be responsible for what he's about to do. Wait a minute, so HBK shows some skin, Sid smiles from ear to ear, then Sid warns Sean that he's not responsible for what he's going to do. What exactly is Sid planning on doing? Huh. Whatever it is, Sean gets prepared for it as we go to commercial break. Vader throws Brett back into the ring, we see the Vader bomb and Brett gets beaten in the main event of Raw. Not a bad match at all and it's good to see Vader pick up a big win on Monday night even if it wasn't a clean victory. Sean looks at his monitor and he sees Psycho Sid backstage with Hose B. Sid says he didn't want to do this. Sean tries to rush to the backstage area but there's no time. Hose B gets powerbombed on a table. Sean gets to the backstage area and it's clear Jose is supposed to be here too for this segment. Sean screams, where is the 60 year old man? And you can see him saying, where's Jose? I don't think this was out of kayfabe concern for Hose B. I think it's more to do with Jose legit not being ready for the cameras. Anyway, that's how Monday Night Raw ended this week and I thought it was good. Psycho Sid and Shawn Michaels have pre-recorded interviews next from San Antonio while Billy Kidman takes on former American male Scotty Riggs. Sid's in the Alamo Dome and he loosely quotes Frederick Nisha by saying, In the act of fighting monsters in the procedure, be sure that you don't become a monster yourself. So we've went from kick or be kicking to quoting German philosophers. How can you not like Psycho Sid? Sid says he'll have to be the monster to take what's his. The walk out of the Alamo Dome is WWF champion. Sid says he'll grab Sean by the throat and Sean will give him a look. A look that Sean's mother will know, a look that Jose Lothario will know, a look that Sean's friends and family will all know. The person at the highest seat in the arena will know the look. The look will say it all. Sean will look at his opponent knowing that Sid is the master and ruler of the world. This was definitely one of Sid's better promos, check this one out when you get a chance. HBK is at a bar in San Antonio, how fitting, and we get to see a few replays of Sid attacking Jose at Survivor Series and Hose B last week on Raw. Sean says Sid is right, there will be a monster appearing at the Royal Rumble and that's going to be the Heartbreak Kid. Sean may not be as big of a monster as Sid but no one can dig deep like HBK. We've got fans kissing in the background because this sure is one of those times when a public display of affection is needed. Look at how this guy looks at the camera after kissing his bird by the way. We all know what that look is. She may be his girlfriend now but tomorrow, horseman business brother. Anyway, Sean bangs on about the people of Texas, how Sean's gonna kick Sid's teeth down his throat and that's what San Antonio is all about. 
And check this out, Sean says he's all man, and then he says this. I'm all man, and believe me, at least, oh, a yard wide, if you know what I'm talking about. Is Sean saying here that his little degenerate is actually a yard wide? Not a yard long, but a yard wide? That would look a little weird, wouldn't it? Sean says his family and friends will be in attendance, and Sid's gonna be very unpopular at the Rumble. This Sunday, Sid may still leave the Rumble as the master and the ruler, but he won't leave as WWF Champion. Vince wonders how Sean would feel if he lets everyone down in the Alamo Dome, and Sean says he delivers better than the post office. HBK won't let anyone down at the Royal Rumble, and nobody can work as hard as Shawn Michaels. Two good promos here, with Sid's being the standout, for me anyway. HBK lost the WWF Championship back at Survivor Series when Sid attacked Jose Lothario with a camera. HBK got booed out of the building, fans were seemingly tired of the white meat babyface Shawn Michaels, and the MSG audience went crazy for Psycho Sid. Since then, the WWF done all they could to make Sid a full blown heel while trying to make Shawn a little more rough around the edges. Vince McMahon even called Shawn a real man's man on WWF TV. And HBK went out of his way to tell everyone that he doesn't really care if the fans cheer him or boo him. No matter what happens during a WWF card, Sean says he always gives the best performance of the night. Sid made things a little more personal when he attacked Jose Lothario's son on Raw, so you had a few things going on here that swayed some fans into backing Shawn Michaels over Psycho Sid. Many fans were still tired of Sean, but not those in San Antonio. HBK was going to get a hero's welcome tonight. We see a Superstars interview with Sean beforehand, and HBK announces he isn't feeling well. He's got a flu, but he's still going to perform tonight inside the ring. Why the WWF announced this, I do not know. Maybe they wanted an insurance policy in case the match was awful. But keep in mind that Sean is apparently sick when you see the match result. We see Sean and Jose backstage walking towards the entranceway, HBK's theme music plays in the arena and the crowd lose their minds. Man, if this guy really has a flu, then that's a lot of hands he's touching on the way to the ring. Still, it's a hometown welcome here for the heartbreak kid, and he seems to have a lot more confidence here in comparison to how he looked during Superstars. Amazing what some <coughs> medicine can do. Sid walks into enemy territory here, but to be fair, he does have some fans in the Alamo Dome. Not a huge lot when compared to the Garden, but you do see a few fans during the match who want Sid to win. I'm sure a lot of fans watching on pay per view wanted to see Sid win also. The champion pushes the challenger down to the mat, and Sean smiles as he walks straight back to Psycho Sid. Sid decides he isn't going to play tonight and he goes straight on the attack. He screams at Sean's parents sitting at ringside before landing a big clubbing blow, but HBK comes back with a crossbody. The crowd pops as Sean rocks Sid's head repeatedly on the mat. Sid gets booted out of the ring and the match continues on the outside. Sid ends up lifting Sean up for a press slam, but HBK rakes Sid's eyes. This allows HBK to throw Sid back inside the ropes and try an aerial attack. The champ grabs Sean in mid-air and we see a power slam, and then the pace slows way down when Sid locks in not just one camel clutch, but three camel clutches. It feels like an absolute eternity, but the fans in the audience make a lot of noise, hoping HBK can somehow get out of this hold. Sean dodges a sit-down attack and the audience pops. Sean's offensive flurry gives the crowd a reason to keep cheering for HBK, but Sean ends up taking the flare corner bump and there's a hush in the Alamo Dome. Sid doesn't give Sean time to recuperate. HBK gets his back rammed into the ring post twice before the match continues in the ring. Jose tries to cheer Michaels back into the match, but maybe Sid is unbeatable tonight in San Antonio. Anytime Sean begins to build offense, Sid puts him right back down. And give it to Psycho Sid here, he knows the crowd is largely against him and he plays up to it brilliantly. A bear hug gets applied in the middle of the ring and Sean's parents watch on as HBK tries to fight out of another hold. The bear hug gets applied twice and you can tell that the match is getting slowed down for HBK's benefit. Still, the crowd doesn't care, anytime Sean breaks a hold, they go nuts, and the match has been laid out in a way that gives the fans a reason to pop multiple times. 
The third bear hug gets applied after Sean tries a second rope clothesline. It's kept held in for an extended period of time as Sid brings it right down to the mat. The big man then hits a leg drop, and Sid keeps it on the canvas as Sean tries to fight out of another submission hold. HBK counters a scoop slam with a slam of his own. We then see Sean's flying forearm. Michaels heads to the top rope and he lands his elbow drop. This all happens very suddenly. Sean then tries to finish it. He goes for the super kick, but Sid grabs his foot and Sean ends up getting thrown to the outside. Sid then lands a power bomb, and that should do it. All Sid has to do is throw Sean back into the ring, and it's all over. But he decides to go after Jose Lothario. This leads to Jose's son jumping the guardrail, and Sid could have destroyed both these guys, but Pat Patterson manages to calm Sid down. The match resumes in the ring and the referee gets taken out. Sid lands a choke slam immediately afterwards. He has Sean beat, but there's no one there to count the pin. A second referee runs down, but Sean kicks out at two. Sid takes out the second referee. Jose Lothario jumps on the apron, and this gives Sean the opportunity to grab a camera. HBK gets revenge for Survivor Series by destroying Sid with the camera. He pins the champ, but Sid kicks out. Sean gets back to his feet. He nails sweet chin music. Earl Hebner gives one of his classic slow three counts, and it's all over. Shawn Michaels becomes a two-time WWF champion. Just like that, Sid's run as champion comes to an end. And coming out of this pay-per-view, fans would think that we're going to see a Steve Austin vs Shawn Michaels WrestleMania main event. Although some drastic changes get made very soon, so make sure to check out Reliving the War to see it all unfold. HBK celebrates with his family and friends at ringside before the show goes off the air. I thought the 1996 Survivor Series match was better, and much of that has to do with the New York audience. You can definitely tell Shawn isn't 100% here also, but either way, a sick Shawn Michaels is still a good performer. It's definitely a match that would have been good to see live in the Alamo Dome, the atmosphere looks great. But as a TV viewing experience, it does fall short of their previous encounter. By the time Shawn Michaels gets done with his announcement, Nitro gets through another two matches and a commentary desk takeover. We have Rick and Scott Steiner vs High Voltage and The Outsiders vs The Extreme, again. So HBK then, Shawn, Shawn, Shawn. I went into this whole thing in depth in a previous video, but in short, Sean has decided to forfeit the WWF Championship due to a knee injury. Not only that, but Sean famously says that he lost his smile and he needs to go back and find it. It's an incredible turn of events really, HBK was talking about being bad to stay at the top just last week, and now, he lost his smile like a set of fucking car keys and he needs to find it post haste. Joking aside, the news does upset some fans in attendance, and you can't overlook that Michaels was one of the WWF's best performers at this time. Losing a big name in the Monday Night War is tough, and as much as we have fun at HBK's expense sometimes, he did always deliver in the ring. That being said, he looked rough at Survivor Series, he was a mess the night after In Your House It's Time, and also, he looked far past fucked at the Albany New York Raw tapings. Royal Rumble 1997 also featured HBK with a flu, so you can just see that the guy was on a downward spiral. HBK saying he lost his smile became the subject of ridicule, and maybe deservedly so. And what many take away from this promo is, at the very core of it all, this was Shawn Michaels refusing to wrestle Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13, and this was all a big load of bullshit to avoid dropping the title. After rewatching all these episodes of Raw for this series, you couldn't convince me that Hart vs Michaels wasn't the plan for Mania, but that potential match is now out the window. Some good stuff does come from Sean forfeiting the title though. The Final Four match is now a WWF Championship match, and Bret would end up having an all time classic WrestleMania match with a completely different opponent. In a way, Sean vacating the title here was maybe a good thing. HBK gets emotional when he talks about not doing things half assed. Sean says he wanted fans to feel like they got their money's worth when they watched him inside the ring. Sean announces that he may be past reconstructive knee surgery at this point. <laughs> yeah. So if he can't perform the way he used to, then he won't wrestle again. 
So it's bye bye Shawn Michaels for now. HBK hands over the belt, there's tears in the ring. Shawn hugs Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon says he's waited for this all his life. And the WWF would now have to go in a new direction in the run up to WrestleMania 13. Unfortunately, Shawn didn't resolve any of his issues when he went home, but when he does eventually get back in the ring, he again continues to put on incredible matches. But right now, the WWF just lost one of their franchise players. We never did get to find out where Shawn's smile was hiding by the way, that mystery remains unsolved.